So I wonder if they could have made the killer better by changing his mask. Uh, that would have been too shiny. Too dark. Wouldn't have been able to see him at night. These, they would have just got copyright hit with these if they tried that. So, so maybe they did pick the best option after all. Hmm. Oh, hey, what's going on? I was just thinking about the movie that I just watched, Fear Street Part 2, 1978. Um... So what do you get when you cross a lot of Friday the 13th with a pinch of sleepaway camp and then let's add a dash of, wait for it, meatballs. Yeah, meatballs. Well, that's what you get with Fear Street Part 2, 1978. You think I'm crazy, right? Well, let's talk about it a little bit before you ultimately decide whether I'm crazy or not. So before we get into the movie, let's just get the normal YouTube stuff out of the way. Please go ahead and like this video, give it the thumbs up, smash that like button. Please make any comments below about this movie or my, my uh, review or anything you want to talk about in the comments. Then of course subscribe to the channel. Then after you get all of that stuff done, hit the notification bell and you'll be the first to know when I post the next pop culture related video, like a movie review for maybe part three of Fear Street. So let's travel back in time to 1978 and let's talk Fear Street part two. Let's go. So Fear Street Part 2 1978 is once again directed by Lee Janiak and stars Sadie Sink, Emily Rudd, McCade Sly, and Jillian Jacobs. You might remember Sadie from a similar role that she played as Max on the Netflix series Stranger Things. I really liked her in that. She plays a loner type in this movie as well. So I really felt like I kind of almost knew her a little bit before as this movie started. Does that make any sense? Um, also, Emily Rudd, does she remind you as much as she does me of Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things? I don't know why, I just think she did. But maybe that's why I enjoyed the story of these two sisters so much. The two shining stars in this second part of the trilogy, trilogy are the characters played by the actresses that I just mentioned. Sadie Sink plays a character named Ziggy, and Emily Rudd plays her sister named Cindy. These two characters give this film way more of an authentic feel than the first movie ever had. While all of the window dressings of the first film made you feel like you were, you know, back in the 90s for the most part, the dialogue and the interactions of the characters in that film seemed a little fake to me. Um, like those characters were just, you know, pulled up, transplanted from today and talked like today. Well, the interactions between these two sisters in Fear Street 1978 and the rest of the summer camp cast feel natural to me as the movie progresses. The two girls really do seem to be like bickering sister, sisters throughout. Um, they seem like it's just normal sisters who are dealing with personal drama that tries to keep them separate with spirit, but together at heart. Maybe it was the witch, Ziggy. What, that doesn't fit your carefully constructed bullshit view of the world? Being like this. Does that sound cheesy? Um, this personal tension though kept me way more interested in these characters and what was going to happen to them than anything that happened to the main characters from part one. And that also goes for a lot of the supporting cast in this part, part two. They do a much better job of making me care about these characters throughout the film. Um, they really do feel like real people to me and their interactions feel authentic. Well, you may be confused about my meatballs reference that I made from the opening. Let me explain. So well, you'll either care or hate for most of the characters in these type of movies. But because of how they interact in this summer camp setting, it seems kind of like meatballs, like they're all friendly with each other and they know each other. Um, whereas in the Friday the 13th films, we usually had no children present at all. I know they did in part six. So as part of these characters' interactions, they do a lot of things like summer camp things, you know, like play teen games. You have the stereotypical bullies done by the popular kids against the uh, the kids that they deem as not as popular. And then you get those kids getting their revenge. Um, it's all fun and games, right? Yeah, it's all fun and games until the killer start chopping them into pieces. <laughs> uh, you want to know the ironic thing, though? We go into this movie knowing really what is going to happen to these main two characters based on the history that we're given in part one and at the beginning of this movie. 
So that should say something about how much more I like this part than the first one. So let's talk about that killer. Run. The killer in this film isn't like a real Jason Boyes type character. For one, we see his face during most of the movie. We know what character it actually is. That is until they play homage to Jason from part two at the toward the end of this film. I'm not going to get too much into that. I don't want to spoil exactly what happened to turn this character in the movie into the killer. But I wish that he had had that look at the end throughout the entire movie. It would have felt more like an 80s slasher to me, like way more than it actually did. So back to that killer. Once again, this ain't your kid's goosebumps movie here, folks, as we're treated to some fairly good gore throughout this whole movie. It actually ramps up a little as the movie reaches the third act. It's a really solid effects in the kills throughout, and there's some good use of CGI when that's needed as well. So I do have a few minor issues with the film that I want to mention because I don't want you to think that I'm just going to gush all over this part. The heart of the film takes place obviously in 1978, but the movie is bookended on the front and the back by the main characters interacting from part one. And they're back obviously in 1994. This means that the runtime is once again a little bloated for my taste. It's about uh, an hour and 50 minutes. It did drag a little, and considering we knew the fates of these characters, like I said, especially the main two going into the story, I think some of that exposition fat could have been trimmed to make it like a lot more tight on that runtime. I also felt a little cheated by that parental warning. You know, it said there was going to be nudity in this one. I was like, oh yeah, really an 80s slasher. Sorry guys out there watching, there's very little of those nimble girls running around scantily clad in booty shorts or swimming in the nude like in all the Friday the 13th films. In this movie, we're treated to what? Several really cheesy sex scenes, which include a lot of guys' hairy asses. Mm. Yeah, man. This is not your typical 70s and 80s slasher film that I remember. So let's wrap all of this personal drama that happens between the two sisters around a movie that's full of fun and games at a summer camp, while also you have an axe-wielding maniac running around wrecking havoc on the group, and you have the makings of a really solid horror flick, if you ask me. So this time, the window dressing, quote-unquote, that included like great music choices on the soundtrack, um, all of the 80, 80s horror tropes that they sprinkle throughout, it just made the experience much more enjoyable to me than the first part. I really love part two way more than one, and I can't wait to see the, the way they take us back in time. It's in the third part. This movie gets my own fire rating. So what did you think of Fear Street Part 2, 1978? Did you think it was better or worse than part one? Let me know in the comments below. And then while you're down there, hit the like button, like any video of mine that you watch, um, or dislike it. Any activity is much appreciated on the videos. Then after you do all that, make sure you're a subscriber to my channel. Trying to grow it this year can only do it with great people like you. Then after you subscribe, go ahead and hit the notification bell and you'll be the first to know when I post what? The review of Fear Street Part 3. So until that time, boys and girls, this is Jeff Man 316 your pop culture reporter signing out saying, you guys be safe out there.